Hey everybody, it's Melanie with Lost and Found. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be for anybody that owns any sort of creative business. So that's antique booth sellers, maybe you have an Etsy shop, maybe you're doing a painted furniture business, maybe you've tried just a couple vendor shows, whatever it is, I think you can really benefit from today's video. All right, in this video, we are going to talk about how to think like a business owner, okay? And I know that that sounds maybe a little out there and maybe a little less practical than some of the other tips that I've given you guys for your small creative businesses, but I promise you, this is really, really important. And especially if this is kind of the first time that you've ever tried to run a business, this is something that you have to learn. It is something that I had to learn. You know, here on the Lost and Found channel, I've got a whole playlist of videos for antique booth owners. A lot of the stuff on there really applies to any of you guys though, any sort of creative home-based business owners. I know most of the people that watch this channel are women that are trying to do something similar to kind of what I've done, which is run a business mostly out of my home, use that to bless my family, and it's based in some sort of upcycling, painting, art selling, crafting kind of world. So if you're in that world, then this video is for you. And it could be worth checking out some of the other videos on our playlist too. And then of course, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then I would love for you to please become a Lost and Found subscriber. We do lots of fun things here, but one of the big things that I really try and do is share what I've learned over 10 years of running Lost and Found to help you guys succeed more in your own small businesses. All right, so I said this video is gonna be about mindset, but before we dive into that, I wanna tell you what it's not going to be. This is not going to be a just have a positive attitude and try harder pep talk, all right? So that is like my personal pet peeve when I'm trying to learn a new skill or grow in a certain area and I go ask someone or some group of people who seem to be, you know, achieving what I want to achieve or doing better in whatever thing I'm trying to learn. And I go ask them for help. Like, hey, how can I get better at this? And I get back basically some response that like, you just got to try harder and really believe in yourself and then you'll see it. I can't stand that. That drives me up the wall because like, that's not what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for some really like practical, let's get down and dirty. How does this actually work? Like, how can I actually get better at this? So this video is not just a think positive pep talk, all right? Now with that said, that doesn't mean that your mindset doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Of course it makes a difference in how you're running a business. But what also matters is your practical skills. And so really those two things go together like you can have an amazing mindset, but not have the skills to do what you need to do. You can have the skills to do what you need to do, but not do them well or execute them well because you don't have a great mindset. So those two things really go together. We've talked a lot about practical skills in other videos. So we are gonna talk a little bit about mindset, really more about just how to think in this video. All right, so quick little backstory. When I started Lost and Found 10 years ago, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and I was six months pregnant with my third little boy. My husband was working in full-time church ministry. I had spent some time working in full-time ministry. That's what I had done um, after college, worked in ministry, and then had stayed at home. So I had never run a business. I had never been a manager at a store or anything. I really didn't have any sort of business training. My college major uh, was political science. So in a lot of ways, I didn't really know anything about running a business, but I started my business, Lost and Found, um, basically as a small antique booth and um, then started painting furniture. Then I added a blog and an online store, but I started it with the intention to make money. It was never a hobby. Um, I didn't know how much money I could make with it, but I needed to help supplement our family's income. So from the outset, I went into it thinking, I really need to make some money at this. And what I learned over the years was that the majority of other people, especially in the antique booth world, that I was talking to and running into, weren't thinking about it that way. They were just doing it for fun. 
Um, they, it was a hobby. They were enjoying going around and finding stuff. They were happy if they had some sales and you know, if, if it didn't cost them too much money every month, then they were happy. It was, it was a hobby for them. And that's great, but I couldn't learn a lot from those people because they were running their business in a way that if I ran my business that way, I wasn't gonna make the money that I needed to make. So I had to start challenging a lot of what was being done around me. And a lot of what I was seeing is just, this is how you do an antique booth. This is how you run a painted furniture business. This is how you do X, Y, Z, right? Because a lot of people doing it around me were doing it as a hobby and that it, it wasn't gonna work. It wasn't gonna work for someone like me who was really wanting to put some money in my pocket. So I had to teach myself how to think a little bit differently and how to make different decisions. And since I've kind of gone through that transition and learned some of those skills, that has been one of the biggest things on my heart that I try to share with other people that are like me, other moms, other women, that maybe you have some creative skills and talents, you've seen some people around you turn that into a business, and you're trying to do the same thing, but you've never done anything like that before. You don't know how to do it before. And you could be like me, where the bulk of people that you're watching around you are just doing it for fun. And so you try to do it like they do it, and then you're constantly saying, but I'm really not making any money. That's because they're running their business differently. Like they're not running a business, they're running a hobby. So that's a huge thing that I talk about over and over again. And let me say, there's nothing wrong with having a hobby as an antique booth dealer. There's nothing wrong with that, if that's what you're doing. But if that's not your goal, then you're going to have to learn some skills that aren't necessarily being practiced around you by the majority of people that you see, okay? So you guys are the ones that I'm talking to in this video. If you're really wanting to put some money in your pocket, if you need to make this thing work to provide some amount of regular income, and I can't promise what that income could be because it could vary widely. Some of you maybe need 500 bucks a month. Some of you need $5,000 a month. I don't know what you need, but you know that you need something regularly and it certainly doesn't need to cost you money, right? You need to be making money. So if that's you, then that's who we're talking about. All right, so I've got four things that we're just gonna run through in the rest of this video. Four things that are kind of ways that you can begin to think less like a hobbyist and more like a business owner. So here's number one. One of my favorite movies of all time is the movie You've Got Mail. And what is the line in there that Tom Hanks says over and over and over to Meg Ryan? You know, he's got this big bookstore, she's got this little bookstore. He's always saying to her, it's not personal, it's business. And what does she do? She gets really upset and she's like, but it is personal. It is personal, of course it's personal, it's personal to me. And he's like, no, it's not personal, it's business, right? So I, I love that and I love that line and I repeat that to myself all the time. Melanie, it's not personal, it's business. So let's just be really honest right here. The bulk of you that are watching this are women and you are creative types, okay? And in general, I'm gonna make some generalities here. In general, us creative women, our businesses are like this extension of ourselves. They feel very personal, right? Because we're creating something and then putting it out there in the world and if people buy it or don't buy it, it's kind of, it can feel like a personal validation of who we are and our abilities, right? Um, so that can be really tough. And we can really entangle ourselves emotionally in our businesses. But here's what I want you to do. If that's you, if you're struggling with that, I want you to repeat to yourself, it's not personal, it's business. All right, so what we really have to do is we have to lessen our emotional connections to our business. Now, I am not saying to make it all unemotional. No, um, you don't need to just like have not care at all about what you're doing. You can't do that, right? It's gonna be in there. But we have to stop making how we feel about our business the first thing like that we do when we're making decisions, right? So like here's an example that I hear all the time. Um, I'm talking to an antique booth owner. There's another booth across town that they really need to move into. It's a much better fit for their business, who they are and what they're doing. But they don't wanna move over there 
because they don't want to hurt the feelings of their friends that have booths here. Okay. So here, that's a, that's a perfect example. Like it's not personal, it's business. Like if you're, if people are going to have their feelings hurt because you move from this booth to this booth, like those people also need to learn. Like it's not personal, it's business. Like you're making a decision for your business. It has nothing to do with if you value these people or wanting to not hurt their feelings. Like you're just making a business decision. You're not going to be a jerk about it. You're not going to go bad mouth this other space. You just know that this space is going to fit better for your business. So like stop the emotional torment of worrying about, oh my gosh, well, I'm going to hurt their feelings. Or maybe, um, you know, maybe you're taking on projects that you don't need to take on, right? I've seen this over and over again with people who do custom furniture work. They hate doing it. And they don't set, or, or even this, they don't set really firm boundaries on the front end. And they say yes to whatever people want them to do. Um, and then they wind up doing way more work than they should do for way too little amount of money. You know, somebody says, I want you to paint this table, but it turns out that it's a table with two leaves and six chairs and they drop it off. And because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or you don't want to sound ungrateful for the work, they don't stand up for themselves and say, I'm going to have to charge you more because you didn't tell me it was this much, or you know, you've changed the design on me, I'm gonna to to charge you a redesign fee, right? Like it's not personal, it's business. We can have, like make, we can make business decisions and still be polite and friendly, but people aren't always happy with them because sometimes they aren't getting what they want, right? Or we're not doing what they want them to do. But that doesn't mean that we're doing anything wrong. Um, that doesn't mean that we're, you know, we're not, um, if we, if somebody's not happy with us saying no, that we've done something wrong. Like it's just a business decision. And another thing is like, if, if something isn't working, like if a product isn't working or something you've tried to create isn't working and isn't selling, it's not an extension of you as like a personal failure, right? Maybe it's just, you know, the wrong product for the wrong time. Maybe it doesn't fit the clientele. Maybe it's just not what people are looking for right now. It doesn't mean that your creativity is bad. You know, it's just not the right thing. We have to stop taking things so personally. We have to detach ourselves a little bit emotionally. So when it's time to make decisions for our business, we can have a clear brain that can make decisions that are informed by reality. All right, so that leads me to point number two, and it's really kind of connected to Point number one, and that is that we need to make decisions that are based first in our realistic options, right? Decisions based in reality. And then we look at our wants second. All right, so here's what I mean by that. We all have different realities that we live in and different realistic options that are available to us. And so quite often as women and women business owners, we look at other people's businesses out there and we think, well, I really want that business. But like realistically, we can't have that business because we don't live in that area or we don't have that amount of time available for us or that skill set required to run that business maybe we don't have yet. And so then we just get bogged down with, but that's what I want. That's what I want to do. Well, that's not helping you. It's not getting you anywhere, right? We like what you want to do is important, but the first thing that you have to look at is what can you realistically do? So what actual available resources do you have? You may want to start a painted furniture business, but you have a bad back and no truck and nobody to help you move and pick up furniture. Well, a painted furniture business might not be the best business for you with your realistic available options right now. Also, you might have, you know, a, a different financial situation than others. Like if you were in a place where again, this thing that you're trying to do, you need it to generate income, then you're going to have to make decisions differently than a person over here who maybe doesn't need their business to generate income. I have friends like that. I have friends that do the exact same thing that I do. And some of them, they are literally the sole providers for their family. And then I've got others over here who their business is is really just for fun. They want it to do well, but if it didn't make a dime, they would be completely fine. And then I'm kind of here in the middle 
And honestly, over the course of 10 years, sometimes I've been way over here. Sometimes I've been a little bit more over here. It changes over time. So we have to look first at just realistically, what do I need to be able to provide for? Like, what are my needs? Am I a single parent and I need to put food on the table? Or do I have college tuition coming up and I really need to make some income? Or, you know, um, maybe I don't. Maybe, maybe all those needs are taken care of. And if they are, then I've got a little bit more freedom to kind of just maybe do what I want. But it's what's not helpful is to look at other people and what they're doing and say, well, I wanna do that, but I can't. And so I guess I just won't do anything. We do that so much and that's just not helpful, right? So your realistic options are going to change over time. What may be realistic for you right now, in two or three years, you could be in a different situation. So again, we have to kind of step back emotionally from what's going on and detach ourselves a little bit from our business look at our realistic options and make decisions on those realistic options first. And then if there's some space over here to factor in our wants and our preferences, then we start looking at those. But we don't start here with our emotions and our wants and our dreams. We don't start here. Don't just trash those, but you've got to look at this stuff over here first. This has to be the solid foundation for what you're doing, okay? Here's a quick, perfect example of this. When we moved here, um, May 2019, I opened my own store. I had always wanted to open my own store. I had my own store for two years, and it was great. I really, really, really did enjoy it. But after two years, I made the decision to close my store. And it wasn't because my store wasn't profitable, but it was because where I'm at in life right now with the age of my children, it wasn't working. It just wasn't working. I didn't have the emotional, physical, mental bandwidth to like be dealing with um, a middle school or junior high, a high schooler, running them all around to all their things and just the exhaustion that that is and running my own store. I just, I didn't have the ability to do that. Now, five years from now, that option is gonna be different for me. I'm gonna be in a different place in my life. And so maybe I can go back five years from now and reopen that store and it'll work then. But with what I was doing right now, with realistically the time that I had available and you know, kind of the emotional effort and mental effort that I had, it just wasn't working. So I closed it, I went back to a booth that maybe takes me an hour a week, and then running my business from my home online. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Again, I'm not saying to be unemotional or it doesn't matter what you want to do. I'm just saying that we have to take those things out of the very first, you know, the, the, that's what we base all of our decisions on. Look at some of this first. Think like a business owner, okay? The guys that are running Amazon and Walmart and Home Depot, they aren't just sitting around thinking about what they want to do, right? They're thinking about what they have to do to run a profitable business. And then if there's some room over here to mix in some wants and man, I would love it if this could work, then sure, throw that in there. But first decide what's realistic for you, where you're at. Okay, number three, to think like a business owner, you have to actually plan and set aside time to work on your business. So when I first started, again, I had little bitties at home. I just kind of did whatever I could do during nap time. And that worked for a little while. But what happens when you're kind of in that, well, I'm just gonna do whatever I feel like today whenever I have time to do it, is you never can really make progress on those big things that you need to do or you find yourself working on just whatever is urgent at the time, right? One of the lessons I learned um, after being in business for about five years was that I had to start prioritizing the activities that were actually earning me income. The things that were actually going to put money in my pocket. There's a lot of stuff in your business that you do that is required of you to do and it's kind of a lot more fun to do, but it's not really the stuff that's that's gonna put money in your pocket, okay? One of those is like, I love shopping for wholesale items. I love getting on and looking through 
um, wholesale websites and finding stuff to buy, I can burn an entire afternoon looking at wholesale stuff to buy for my online store. But like, do I really need five hours of looking at home decor online? I really don't. Like, I need to like spend 30 minutes, find what I need to, like find what I need to buy, order it, and then get back to finish painting that piece of furniture, which is the thing I'm actually selling. Does that make sense? Like, we have to actually work on the things that are going to generate us revenue or that are gonna move the needle in your business. If you've heard that phrase, move the needle, like there's just stuff that you have to do to really see things grow. And often it's kind of the not fun stuff, right? So if you're not planning, you're not prioritizing, you're not setting aside actual work hours, it's hard to get that kind of focus. And you're gonna find yourself just kind of spinning your wheels. And yeah, you're selling some stuff over here, but you're not seeing that kind of business building growth that you really want to see. That's going to start coming when you sit down, you plan your weeks, you prioritize work time, even if it's only an hour a day. But again, like business owners, they go to work. They don't just work when they can. If you're running a business, then you run a business and you have time that you work and then you have time that you don't work that you can relax and recover and have fun and do your creative things that you wanna do. All right, this is the last one, number four. And this one may be the most important of all of them is you have to learn some basic bookkeeping and accounting things. Now, I am not a numbers gal, like I'm not. I'm terrible with numbers. My 10 year old can like outdo me with math in his head all the time. In fact, it's a point of, um, he, you know, he has a lot of fun <laughs> being able to beat mom in math problems. So me and numbers, I look at them and my eyes just kind of glaze over. But you have to learn the basics of just business accounting. You have to familiarize yourself with your regular monthly expenses. What is it costing you to run your business? You have to understand the idea of the cost of your goods. So the stuff you're selling isn't free. Like you pay something for it. So you sell $2,000 at your booth, but some of that $2,000 is the cost of what all that stuff was. So if you're just looking at it and going, well, I, look at my, I got $2,000. You didn't make $2,000. You didn't. You made $2,000 minus the cost of what all that stuff was, minus your expenses for that month. That's what you made, okay? So that's, those are just some examples. Your, um, your expenses, your costs of goods, um, planning for your taxes. Like if you're running a business, you need to be paying in some quarterly taxes. That's money that you need to be pulling out a little bit every month. You've got to kind of get your head around that. Um, you need to understand the idea of inventory turn, even though like, ugh, I don't want you to get into the weeds of that, but the basic concept is if I have too much sitting on my shelf for too long, then I then it limits the amount of profit I can make, right? So the quicker we buy and sell and the quicker that cycle goes, the higher and higher our profit goes. If we buy and sell and it's slow, then we see less profit over time, okay? Classic, classic antique booth owner mistake. I'm just gonna buy and then I'm gonna buy, and then I'm gonna buy, and it's gonna sit in a warehouse, and it's gonna sit in tubs in my garage, and it's gonna sit in my attic, and it takes me two years to sell it. That's a really slow cycle. If you're running at that kind of cycle, you are really, really limiting the profit you can make. That's not thinking like a business owner, okay? So just, you know, get you an accounting book for dummies, or hop into our Booth Seller Bootcamp course, we talk a lot about that. Like if you can get just some basic functioning knowledge of your numbers and your bookkeeping of your business, you will see your business do better. Because if you're not paying attention to that, there's no way to objectively evaluate how well you're doing. If the only thing you know is how much you're selling, you are only getting like one fourth of the story of your business. And there's no way for you to make these rational strategic decisions and make plans because you, you don't know the whole story of what you're doing. Your sales 
are not the story of your business. They're only one tiny part of it. So a business owner gets those basic business concepts. They familiarize themselves with them. I know that it can sound intimidating and overwhelming. I'm not saying you got to like dive into the weeds of it, but get some functional understanding of your expenses, of the cost of your goods, of how quickly your inventory is turning over and what you need to be setting aside for your year end taxes. All right, so that's what we've got. Those are some four things that I need you to think about if you're wanting to make that shift from a hobbyist to a business owner, okay? And I'm always reminding myself like, I'm a business owner, I'm a CEO, I put my CEO hat on. If I was running a business out there in corporate America, these are the things I would be doing. Like I would be thinking like this. I wouldn't just be trying to have fun or trying to express my creative energy, right? Like those things are awesome, but those things aren't what's primarily on the brain of a business owner. If you're trying to take whatever you're doing to the next level, then I hope that this is helpful for you. Again, I know it's kind of a little out there. Um, we can talk some more about it. I do talk a lot more about it in my Booth Seller Bootcamp course. In fact, that's what makes my course different from a lot of what else you're gonna find there online because like, you can learn how to stage your shelves prettier for your antique booth. Um, you can learn how to shop estate sales better, but if you don't understand the basics of running a business, then you're still gonna be missing the mark, right? And so most, again, because most antique booth people that I find are, are running it like a hobby, they're not getting into the nitty gritty details of, of are you actually producing a stable, growing, profitable business? And that's what I really try to hammer in on in our Booth Seller Bootcamp course. So um, the link for that, of course, is up here and it's always down in the video description box too. You can join that anytime. It's open. Um, you get four weeks of video training and you get entrance into our private bootcamp group. And in that group, I show up once a month and I answer questions and um, do a live q and I'm there answering questions other, you know, other times. We try to um, really make that a place where you can hammer out these ideas and start to see that growth for your business. So thank you guys so much. If you've got any thoughts for me, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear back from you. And of course, subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys again soon.